Thank you for joining us for our presentation on gas contacting overview um, for the aquaculture market. My name is Jim White. I'm a regional sales manager with Maisie Injector Company and my counterpart, Mike Spilner, who is also a regional sales manager with Maisie Injector Company. And today we're going to be doing a presentation on uh, gas contacting overviews for the aquaculture market. So we're going to, need to do a brief introduction about the company, uh, company history, as well as some of the markets served by Maisie. And then we'll talk specifically about the aquaculture market and some of the different competing technologies that, uh, that we compete against, particularly uh, paddle aerators. And then from there, we'll go into gases that are used with our technology, as well as our gas contacting systems followed by a brief overview of the function and operation of our Venturi gas injectors. And then we'll go into specific applications for each one of those, uh, specifically being in-tank or basin aeration, as well as uh, inline gas contacting. And then lastly, we'll go over some of the advantages of Maisie technology versus some of our uh, competitors on the injector market. So a little bit about Maisie Injector Company. The company is headquartered in Bakersfield, California. It was founded in 1978 by Angelo Maisie. Uh, our original product offering was for the aquaculture market for what we call chem fertigation and air ejection, where we're either injecting uh, liquid fertilizers or air to improve plant growth. And then in 1982 was the introduction of our gas injectors that we'll be discussing today. So as I touched on a moment ago, we started out in the ag industry. That's still a, a large component of our overall business. But from there, we branched out into multiple different markets in the municipal and industrial sectors. So from those different markets that we started working in, uh, we've developed a series of products specific to each one of those markets. And here's just a brief overview of some of those products. Um, a particular focus today are going to be the nozzles in the lower left-hand corner, the pipeline flash reactor, which is that spool piece in the center, and then the Venturi injector located just above and to the right of that. So our Venturi gas injectors, the photos here on the left, these are some of our um, plastic injectors that are offered in either polypropylene or PVDF. They range in size from a half an inch connection size up to four inch. And depending upon the model, some of them have uh, dual suction ports. And here are our mixing nozzles, or as we call them, mass transfer multiplier mixing nozzles. And these range in size from a half an inch up to uh, six inches in diameter. Also available in polypropylene and PVDF, as well as stainless steel. So now I'm going to touch on uh, paddle aeration. This is a commonly used technology in the aquaculture market. And there are some drawbacks associated with this technology. And one of those being aerosolizing of water, uh, increasing the evaporation rate and the contamination concentration in the ponds, as well as their effective depth. They're only good to about one to two feet below the surface. Uh, in addition to that, they also require power to be ran to each one of those aerators, which uh, introduces power into the water. Um, there also are moving parts that over time will wear out. And service and maintenance requires people to go out into the pond to do maintenance and service the equipment. Um, they have mi limited mixing capabilities, depending upon the depth of the pond. And the overall spacing of each individual aerator will determine how effective they are. And uh, the positive effects on surface O2 levels are, are good. However, there's no real improvement in the overall water quality due to the inability of those paddle aerators to uh, treat the water below that one to two foot level. So now a little bit about uh, Maisie advantages. Um, 
couple of things to note here. One, we have a very quiet operation. We don't have any blowers. We're utilizing a pressure differential across the Venturi that I'll go into here in a moment uh, that draws either ambient air, oxygen, or ozone in. Very low maintenance. There's no moving parts on our system with the exception of a water pump. We do not have any depth limitations. In fact, the deeper the water, the more efficient we become. Uh, we have very low operating and installation costs, uh, some piping, injectors, and, and the pump. The pump is typically the largest cost item uh, in the entire system. It's very easily adaptable. We can uh, apply this technology in tanks, ponds, lagoons, basins, and reservoirs, as well as uh, in, in pipe applications as well. Um, unlike paddle aeration, we can introduce air, uh, oxygen, or ozone. Uh, they're very resistant to corrosion, erosion, and abrasion. And we have a very energy efficient oxygen transfer rate. Um, alpha factor tested and validated. We do have those testing uh, results available as well as our ox oxygen transfer rates. So now I'm going to pass it over to Mike, and he's going to talk a little bit more about some of the challenges in the growing aquaculture market. Thanks, Jim. Uh, so here at Maisie, while we don't consider ourselves experts in the aquaculture market, uh, it has been a significant market for us for many years. And it's a rapidly growing one because we it's an area where we can put to use our knowledge and experience in the design and supply of gas contacting systems. So our equipment has been used on well boats, various fishing vessels, as well as onshore fish farms. And as tighter regulations are put on these companies, whether it's restricting the amount of water they can use or discharge, or even the amount of land that they're able to utilize in these expensive and valuable oceanfront locations is pushing these companies more and more towards recirculating aquaculture systems, primarily because they can reuse or recirculate the vast majority of their water. And this, this type of system only requires a small fraction of the land area that the other systems require. Now, to take advantage of the benefits of a recirculating uh, aquaculture system, it's critical to have and to maintain very good water quality. And two gases that play major roles in, in many of these treatment systems would be oxygen and ozone. Now, oxygen is arguably the most important factor for increasing the stocking density, or in other words, being able to put more fish into a same size tank and improving productivity. Uh, nitrification is also a very important process in many of these treatment systems because nitrogen, whether it's present as ammonia or nitrite, needs to be removed needs to be removed. But nitrification process does have uh, quite a high oxygen demand, approximately four point six parts of oxygen per part of ammonia. Now, ozone is used in a wide range of applications, whether it's treating the influent water coming into a facility or the effluent water being discharged, as well as the recirculating water inside uh, that facility. And last, but probably equally as common for CIP or clean in place applications, if a tank or a piece of equipment needs to be disinfected. When oxygenating the water, we can use the oxygen from atmospheric air or pure oxygen or concentrated oxygen. In the projects I've worked on, it's been more common to use pure oxygen or concentrated oxygen because it drastically increases the, the stocking density that a facility can uh, support. And this is because oxygen from a pure oxygen source has a solubility level that's approximately five times greater than the oxygen coming from atmospheric air. So if we can drive up the DO levels uh, higher and higher, they can support more and more fish in each tank. Additionally, pure oxygen can be transferred uh, much more efficiently. So we can use a smaller gas injection system uh, that requires even less energy 
all while transferring more oxygen into solution as compared to an atmospheric air injection system. Last downside of injecting air is, as I mentioned earlier, that nitrogen is a common contaminant that needs to be removed from the recirculating water. Uh, air contains quite a bit of nitrogen. And so if we're injecting it at one point and then it has to be removed at another point, it, it reduces the efficiency of, of any given facility. Ozone has quite a few benefits. Um, one is it reacts very quickly and ultimately reverts back to oxygen, which is going to be a positive uh, for any aquaculture system. Additionally, it's a very strong oxidant, so it can be effective against inorganics, whether that's iron or H2S or manganese. Uh, it's also able to be used to reduce levels of bacteria and virus. It's 12 times more soluble in water than oxygen. Uh, it can be used to break down organics and reduce color. This is especially useful when being used in conjunction with a biologically active filter because the ozone can break down the long chained organics into smaller organics and that makes them more biodegradable so the biologically active filter can is better able to remove those organics from that water. And when doing some research, uh, the most common use of ozone in these facilities is actually just for general improvement of the water quality. So this can help reduce environmental sources of stress uh, on the fish, improving their health, uh, reducing the chance of disease, and, and therefore improving the productivity and efficiency uh, of, of these facilities. When designing a gas contacting system, um, rather than just selecting a Venturi injector and some mixing nozzles, we're taking into account a number of different factors. And this process can be divided into two parts. The first would be uh, the efficient gas transfer or dissolution into the water. So some of the factors we're looking at uh, for this portion of the design is one is gas to liquid ratio or G to L ratio. We want to make sure we're not putting, trying to put too much gas into a too small amount of water because then we'll end up with a very inefficient system. Additionally, it's important to understand the relationship between pressure and solubility limits. While our equipment can be used on gravity lines and, and low pressure main lines, it can also be used when the main line is pressurized. So if that main line does have one bar or two bar of pressures, it actually increases the solubility limit of whatever gas we're injecting. And so we can inject more oxygen or more ozone and do it more efficiently. Last one here, mixing intensity. Not only are we able to inject the gas, create the small bubbles, but we're constantly uh, re-shearing, cutting those bubbles in half, cleaning off their surfaces because we have the, the aggressive mixing points of the Venturi injector and the nozzles. So that way we're able to renew that interface and allow more gas to actually dissolve into the surrounding water. The second part is now to take that dissolved gas that is in solution and effectively mix it with the bulk water, whether it's in a main line or in a tank. And so we want to have as uniform dispersion of that dissolved gas throughout that main liner tank. So this is where the mixing nozzles are so important, where if we just used a Venturi injector, we would lose out on a lot of efficiency and we would have a, uh, a main line or a tank that's very poorly mixed. And mixing is so important because if we're adding oxygen to the water, we want to have the fish in one corner of a tank have access to the same dissolved oxygen as the fish in the other corner of the tank, or if you're adding ozone for disinfection or uh, general water quality improvement, we wanna make sure all of that water is being exposed to that ozone. And this is why we wanna make sure that uh, we are using a side stream percentage that is large enough that allows us to impact that mainline flow and, and effectively blend that side stream with the mainline. So there's a number of technologies that are used uh, in this market. Ours would be considered uh, Venturi sidestream injection. 
the other ones, for example, diffusers can be uh, a low cost option. Uh, their transfer efficiencies can be limited, especially as over time they'll foul and clog and require cleaning. So they'll lose their efficiencies over time and eventually they'll have to be either maintained or, or replaced. The U-tube typically requires a minimum water depth, which can make it impractical for, for a number of facilities. Packed column, I would say the, the main issues I hear about would be fouling as well on that. Space cone is a recognized technology that can be effectively used for adding oxygen into the water, but it does require a, a good amount of footprint, and it's also seen as a more expensive option. The mechanical aerator, and this is what the paddle wheel would would uh, fall under. So Jim covered that quite well. But some other downsides to it is, especially as it starts to break down over time, then it'll start to lose its efficiency, become a maintenance issue, uh, and, and in the end, we'll need replacement as well. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Jim so he can talk about uh, the function and operation of our individual components. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, this first slide here, this is an example of one of our stainless steel larger injectors. Uh, as I touched on earlier, we do offer these in polypropylene PVDF as well as stainless steel. So depending upon the application, um, we have all of those options available. So in addition to loose injectors, we also offer Venturi injection skids. Uh, here we have a couple solid models of some very basic uh, injection skids that are used for typically ambient air or oxygen applications for drawing in that gas and then mixing either in a tank or in a pipeline downstream. So here's the CFD model of our Venturi in action. You can see the, the blue in the front inlet part of the injector where it then comes into the nozzle that's where the low pressure zone is generated and uh, the vacuum is created to draw in that gas and then the green section is where we're vigorously mixing that gas and water mixture to a homogeneous mixture that then comes out of the end of the venturi and this slide shows uh a see-through injector in action. Uh, mode of flow on this photo is from left to right, and then you can see the gas suction arrow down below. So at that uh, nozzle point, that constricted area is where we have the low pressure zone, the gas is drawn in, and then you can see that vigorous mixing and that interface where we're shearing that gas to liquid to get it dissolved. So now I'm going to touch on uh, what we call secondary gas mixing devices. So in the last photos, we showed you how the uh, Venturi works and how we draw that gas into solution. Now the next step of the process is, um, depending upon the application, how we further mix um, that side stream of air, ozone, or oxygen with the full body of water that we're, what we're flowing into. So I'm gonna speak on the basin nozzle manifold, and this would be any sort of open top tank uh, that is not a pipeline. And so these are uh, examples of our mass transfer mixing nozzles that are utilized in our basin nozzle manifolds. Uh, the key thing here that Mike touched on a couple slides ago is to determine what that uh, overall side stream flow rate is, as well as the thrust pressure to ensure that uh, we match that with the size of the tank so that we can get complete mixing. The other component is we wanna have a fair amount of velocity coming out of those nozzles so that we can minimize the bubble size and push that out into solution as far as possible so that we give that gas uh, as much residence time as possible to be able to further dissolve into liquid before it reaches the surface. And here we have an animation of uh, a typical basin nozzle manifold configuration. So here we have a square tank. Uh, in this particular example, we have a submersible pump. Depending upon the configuration of the tank, uh, if you do have bulkheads, you can have that be an external pump. We then pressurize that water, flow that across the venturi. 
that's ideally located above the water table. And from there, we draw in the gas of choice. And then it flows back down into the basin nozzle manifold and through those mass transfer mixing nozzles. And that is where we end up taking that side stream of oxygenated, ozonated, or air injected water to mix with the uh, complete body of water so that we have uh, good mixing and homogeneous distribution of um, air, oxygen, or ozone. And this is an example of uh, a larger stainless steel basin nozzle manifold. So we do have these available in PVC plastic as well as stainless steel, depending upon the application. And now I'm going to hand it back over to Mike, and he's going to talk about uh, our pipeline flash reactors. Thanks, Jim. So when we're using a basin nozzle manifold, that might be an example of where we're putting ozone into a contactor. Now, we can also do that directly in line using our pipeline flash reactor or PFR, as well as use the PFR to inject other gases. So if we look at the animation here showing how this type of system is configured, you have your large main line flowing from left, and left to right. We could take a small side stream, boost up the pressure using our side stream pump, pump it through the venturi injector to draw in, uh, atmospheric air or ozone or pure oxygen and then that gas water mixture is blended back into the main line through the mixing nozzles along the side of the PFR. So if you look closely you won't see any type of static mixing elements inside of the pipeline and so we don't have any pressure any significant pressure loss across that spool piece. Additionally downstream you're going to get homogeneous mixture very quickly. So you can actually measure the dissolved oxygen or dissolved ozone or ORP downstream and even control this system based on that measurement. A couple of examples. So on the left, you'll see our PFR that I mentioned previously. On the right is our pipeline nozzle manifold or PNM. Very similar product, slightly different design. We can offer these with inlet outlet connections of as, as small as eight inch or so. And, and we've built them as large as I believe the largest one is greater than 90 inch. Uh, with the smaller systems, we can offer the PFR and the PNM in plastic. And so we have the range pretty well covered. Use our computational fluid dynamics or CFD software. We have this in house. So we use it to design the PFRs and the PNMs. And here's an example where we're actually looking at the cross sections downstream of the PFR to analyze the volume fraction of gas. And of course, the goal would be to have that uh, gas equally dispersed throughout the entire cross section. So this type of inline gas contacting system can be used at a number of locations. One example is uh, it could be used to treat the incoming water if a facility is using groundwater and it has high levels of iron. Uh, that iron can be oxidized by injecting air or oxygen or ozone, so it can be precipitated out and, and filtered out of that incoming water. This could also be installed on the recirculating line to inject ozone, whether it's upstream of a biological filter or not. Uh, and the last example would be um, on that recirculating line just prior to re-entering the fish tanks to increase the amount of dissolved oxygen in that recirculating water. One of the advantages of our system or the Maisie system, especially on the PFR or a system using the PFR, is no mainline pressure loss or at most maybe 0.1 psi of pressure loss, uh, so extremely low. It also it requires very little maintenance. The only component with any moving parts in these systems would be the pump uh, and and most facilities have personnel that are comfortable working on those pumps. Um, so not a significant issue. Very small footprint, while other side stream injection systems might use some kind of saturation vessel or a contact tank. We do not, so 
our footprint just consists of that side stream pump, the Venturi injector, and then that side stream is put right back into the main line. And as I mentioned earlier, we can operate on main lines that are very low pressure or even gravity flow, but we also have the flexibility to operate on main lines that have some pressure, whether that's one bar or two bar, and improve our efficiency that way. And we've touched on it uh, a couple of times now, but the high level of mixing that's achieved with our equipment uh, helps in two ways. Number one, it continues to uh, renew that interface between the liquid and gas, so more gas can be transferred into solution. And then once that gas is in solution, it helps it disperse it equally throughout a uh, cross section of the pipeline or throughout a, a tank. Now, you may see a number of, of other injectors out on the market or Venturi's out on the market, and a lot of times they may look like ours um, if you're looking at them from the outside. And so that's why we refer to them as Maisie copies, but they don't perform like Maisie injectors. One issue is many times they require a higher pressure differential across them to even function. And so this means you've got to operate it at a higher inlet pressure and it can't handle very much outlet pressure if, if you want it to create any suction. Um, lower material quality or even unreliable material quality. Uh, if I've heard of issues where so, uh, someone buys an injector of one material and when it arrives, it's something totally different. Um, less suction and also less gas dissolution into the water. And this goes back to uh, the fact that we at Maisie have quite a bit of experience designing systems to dis dissolve gas in solution. So we know how to select the correct Venturi nozzles, the water flow rates and the pressures to have an efficient system. So with that being said, uh, Jim and I both appreciate you taking the time to watch this presentation. If you have any questions or you want to discuss anything further, both of our email addresses are up on the screen here. Uh, feel free to reach out. We'd love to talk about it further.